morning. It is bright and early here in downtown Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, 7.20 a.m. to be exact. I'm about to walk into the Writers' Conference here at Wiley Theater. I'm pretty nervous, but I'm also really excited. And in exactly two hours, I have a one-on-one -on -one pitch session with an agent. And it was actually the first, my first choice for an agent out of the three choices I gave. So I've been practicing my pitch all week and all last night and all this morning. So I'm still nervous, but I think once I get in there, I'll be okay and everything will be fine. So I'm about to walk in there and we'll see what this is all about. are flowing but unfortunately I found out that our dog our Siberian Husky just escaped from the backyard and now one of the neighbors has her so I need to go talk to my fiance and figure out if we need to head home or maybe she won't mind watching our dog for us because we're like three hours away from home but yeah anyways the pitch went really well I sat through a couple of the workshops and some of the sessions and it was really great. I've met a lot of really awesome people, so, so far it's been a great experience here. Hi! Why do you keep running away? Hey, sweets. Hi, sweets. You mad that I left? You are my Houdini. My little Houdini. Hi, guys. All right, so we ended up having to come back home from Dallas-Fort Worth from the writers' conference a little bit early since Denali, our Siberian Husky, escaped from the backyard. She literally dug a hole under the fence and just ran around. She was literally a little Houdini, but I didn't get to stay for the second day, which was unfortunate. I only stayed for the first full day. I was able to do my pitch session with the agent, like I mentioned in the videos before. But I wanted to go over some of the things I learned while I was there that maybe not many industry professionals talk about so openly because I did learn a lot of great things and I wanted to share them. So we'll get started. One of the first things that I did before, this is in preparation for the Writers' Conference, was to create a binder. <laughs> I know this sounds so nerdy but I'm a huge nerd so bear with me. If you're a writer most likely you love pens and paper and staying organized or who knows maybe you hate being organized. But I found that if I can't I got a small three ring binder like this I was going to bring a spiral bound notebook and then I realized that my notes would just be jumbled all over the place and I'm much better when I have tabs and dividers and where I can actually move what I've written into certain categories. So I don't have a fancy cover for this just yet. I need to make one. I'll probably do some sort of collage or writer's inspiration, something to that extent. But anyways, this is the binder that I have. And in here, I have a bunch of loose leaf paper. And the reason I did this was so that I could unclip it and move it into, you'll see these lovely tabs over here binder tabs, you know, just like when you were in middle school. But basically what this allowed me to do was I could go to my workshops, write my notes like I did right here, and then I can move them into the different tabs depending on how I want to break these up. One of the workshops I went to was social media magic, very fitting since I'm filming a YouTube video. Another one, I have my notes from my pitch session with my agent. Another one was secrets of success, which you saw a little bit of that in the video, well the videos before, there was the author success panel where some published authors actually shared their real life experiences and their success stories and gave advice. So 
I wrote down some of the key things I gathered from that. A couple of other workshops in here, but I won't go through all of them because if you want to find out more, then you should attend a writer's conference near you. So having a binder was absolutely crucial. Also, if I got any documents while I was there or had, you know, my registration information, the schedule for the day, this allowed me to keep everything in one cohesive area and I was able to just flip through and find what I needed. So I highly recommend before going to any sort of workshop, writer's conference, any other writing event, to make a binder. That way you have all your information in one place. Another thing to do before you attend a writer's conference or workshop is to make business cards. And I know that might sound silly, but it's actually not. If you're approached by an agent or any other industry professional, an editor, a publisher, and you don't have a business card, it can look pretty unprofessional. Unfortunately, I didn't know this before I went into this writer's conference, but I did meet someone who has an awesome business card and she gave me one and I'm definitely going to mirror it. But this is what it looks like. But anyway, she has her photo on one side and then it just has her first and last name. So here it says Jennifer Locke and underneath that it says author. And then she has her contact information below that, her phone number, her email address, and then also her Twitter username. So I thought this was really great. I would like to have a professional photo taken for this or just have one where it's not me taking a selfie. So I'm going to order these very soon, as soon as I get the picture that I want. Now we can talk about what happens when you're actually at a conference. When you're at a conference, it's very important to present yourself in a very professional manner, but don't shy away from your personality. If you're loud and giggly and bubbly, be that same person at the writer's conference. You'll find like-minded people. People who like that sort of behavior will be drawn to you. So if you're not yourself, you might attract people that you normally wouldn't really talk to or maybe even get along with. So just make sure to be yourself when you're there. Be open and honest. And if someone asks you what you're writing about, tell them. Don't say, oh, it's, I'm working on something. and It's going to be so great. A lot of the time when you go to a conference, you're there to pitch your ideas to agents or to other people for that matter. So if someone asks you what your book is about, you should probably tell them. It's a perfect opportunity to practice your pitch, first of all. It's a great way also to test it out on someone if you haven't done that before, which is another thing I highly recommend, practicing your pitch ahead of time and doing it verbally out loud in front of somebody. But if you haven't done that, it's a great way to get that first initial impression about your pitch. If they have questions, like a lot of questions, then maybe you realize you need to go back and reword some parts of your pitch. And what a pitch is, is basically a 30 to 90 second elevator speech. It's a quick, very short synopsis of what your book is about. And your pitch includes your hook and then enough to keep the person listening wanting more. So you have something that hooks them. You kind of give some information about the characters or the plot or whatnot. And then you kind of leave it where it's like, oh, this is open again if this doesn't happen. So it makes them interested and they want to learn more about it. You never tell them the ending of your book in your pitch. <laughs> it's not a good idea because then you just totally gave away the whole thing. That's what a synopsis is for. But when you're doing a pitch, you're trying to draw somebody in. So make sure that you find a hook or have a hook so you can reel them in. Give them enough information about the plot so they can get the feel of your story. And then leave them with something where they're wanting more. Also, while you're at a conference, it's likely that you will get business cards from agents or publishers or even other writers or authors like yourself. When you get a business card, sometimes it's a good idea to write on the back of it with an action item. Like if you want to follow up on something or go check that person's website or anything like that, it's a good idea because you meet so many people and they, their names and faces can all get kind of jumbled in your head. So if you have their business card, you're able to write an action item on the back of it. That can really help you when you go home 
can actually start organizing all the things that you have to do after the conference. When you're at a writer's conference, try to attend as many workshops and sessions as you possibly can. These people have taken time out of their day to help aspiring writers to better themselves and to give advice. So take advantage of this. I mean, writers' conferences, they are a little bit pricey. So it's a good idea to really take advantage of all the knowledge that these people have. They've been in the industry for a while. They have a lot of things that they can tell you and things to say. So it's a good idea to actually attend these workshops and sessions and take notes. That's what your handy dandy notebook is for. Take notes so that you can go back and look at them later on when you finally become a published author. <laughs> By the end of the conference, you're going to feel mentally exhausted, physically exhausted, just emotionally wiped and drained from all of the talking and learning that you've just done. So it's important to give yourself time to regroup. So you kind of need like a post-conference getaway. And not necessarily a getaway, it can be at your house, but a time where you can just kind of regroup, kind of step away from everything for a little bit. But just make sure that you follow up, you look at all your action items from the conference, prioritize them so they're in some sort of order, read over your notes just so that things stay fresh in your memory. And my favorite, make a revision checklist. When you're there, you start to get so many ideas floating around. I could do this in my story. I could do this. I need to add this. I need to take out that. That character needs to die. You will have so many different ideas when you're there because you hear all these different people talking and it's just creative overflow. That can be really overwhelming. So you'll probably scribble a lot of notes in your notebook reminding you of things that you thought of and things that you want to do. And if you weren't already working like a mad woman in the hotel room the night after the first day of the conference, then you'll probably be busy writing the week after you get back. Write down a list of all these elements, everything that you want to add to your story, and that way you won't forget them. After you've prioritized everything that you want to add to your story or remove from your story, it's important to make a revision plan. And I know that might sound kind of silly, but you need to use your post-conference energy to sit down and figure out where in your writing schedule you can place these revisions, how much time it's going to take to do them, where you can fit it into your day. You don't want to lose that momentum and that drive after the conference, so it's important to make a revision plan. If you had a pitch session with an agent or got some really great advice from another industry professional, after the conference is a great time to send a follow-up or a thank you note, just thanking them for their time. Last but not least, if an agent requested your manuscript for you to submit it, make sure you do it. But don't just go home and send it off right away. Really revise it. Make sure it's absolutely perfect before you send it to that agent. That's all that I have for today. That pretty much wraps up the video for my first experience at a writer's conference. I'm hoping to attend many more in the future. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I post new videos every Tuesday, so I will see you guys next week. Bye.